G'day guys, welcome back to this semi-lockdown, kind of half-in-limbo version of a video on the True Footy YouTube channel. I'm joined once again by young Druzite. How are you, Druzy? How's lockdown treating you? Yeah, nah, doing well, doing well. It's been uh, a bit shite, but you know, you can't complain. True, yes, Perth is very lucky in this respect. Of course, just coming out of a five-day snap lockdown. So, one question has been on my mind, Druzy, since the start of lockdown, which was announced last Sunday, was how is COVID-19 going to affect the 2021 AFL season. What are your thoughts? Um, yeah, hopefully not too much. Not as bad as last year. Although over here last year, it wasn't it wasn't too bad being in Perth. I got to go to like 10 games last year, I think. Or 9 or 10-ish. So it felt pretty normal and the doctors were shit again. So just a normal season as a, as a Frio fan, really. Yeah, this season with um, seeing how quick everything can go from 0 to 100, it's... You know, it's a bit scary still. Mm. Um, I think it will be still compromised in some way. You're right. Perth did, in particular, have it so lucky last year. And I think we probably lapsed into this, like, complacency in particular. I think the issues surrounding how that guard, that security guard got COVID and then went back into the community, I think that's probably highlighted a lot of issues with the way they quarantine people as well. So yeah. I'm hoping we learn from it. Hopefully we get away from zero cases. But I think for as long as there's a chance that at any moment a state can go into a snap lockdown, we have to embrace the possibility that the season's going to be compromised as well. Did you think going into, like when the fixture was released, did you think perhaps we might see a different fixture format this year? Yeah, I think it should have been. Like you go on an away trip, like in the NBA, they go on like an East Coast trip. Mm. They go up the coast. But um, yeah, like teams should come to Perth, play West Coast, Freo, then fuck off sort yeah. of thing. Um, rather than just going home away, home away. doesn't seem sustainable in the current climate. Yeah, I, I do think... Uh, minimizing interstate travel would probably have been a good step. I think mm. the way that the playing group or the, the players association seemed to sort of accept that, you know, traveling for weeks on end wasn't actually so bad this year. Mm. It seems like the players got around the away trips and then having like two or three weeks at home. I think that could have been a good move, but I think we're going to see in some way, shape or form a compromise season. Hopefully we get 22 rounds, mm. um, but there's probably going to be postponed games if a state has to snap into lockdown at any point but for now we are still kind of semi locked down uh up until sunday night which is valentine's day druzy do you have a date absolutely do you not nah. ah, <laughs> proud of you thanks yeah well neither do i but if we <laughs> did you know what would be a great tool manscaped is running a promotion at the moment make sure you check out their website go to manscaped.com and you will get 20 percent off their products if you use the code true 4020 Will you be my Valentine and bring me the lawnmower 3.0? I have plans. now. So, Jesse, there's a moment every year where champion data comes out. I don't know about you, but it just seems like a load of bloody hogwash, mate. Nah, it's fucking sick, bro. Is it? No. Yeah, nah. <laughs> what even is it? Uh, it's basically people who are trying to break down the game of AFL into stats and they're doing a, they, they're given a good shot, all right? But it doesn't seem to work. Some of the results they come out with are ludicrous. You were talking about it before. They've come up with a list of elite players based on their algorithms. Uh, talk me through some of the El Stanko ones. Free or only have five. That's sorry. Okay, a win straight up. <laughs> who who no. else would you have a free as elite? I think Luke Ryan is a shout. Yeah. For uh, okay. It. I was going to say Mickey Walters for the position he plays as yeah. well. Yeah. But when you consider that, like, I don't know, you're, like Oscar Allen for West Coast is in, but like a mm. Andrew Brayshaw isn't. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, we don't know how it's measured. But there's only one player from GWS, Perryman, out of their whole stacked list. I believe last year they had six elite players as well. Yeah, well, they probably do. But yeah, Gold Coast, Sam Collins and Matt Rowe. Matt Rowe played like two or three games. He probably yeah. is. But yeah, Mason Cox is in it as Mason well. Mason Cox is one of the worst players in the AFL. So if you play two good games a year, apparently yeah. you're an elite player. Mm. Zach Fisher, he's a good player, but Paddy Cripps isn't even in it. Yeah. Carlton. So it's just so inconsistent. I don't think it's worth even looking into. If it's based on just one year's form, Paddy Cripps probably didn't have the year that would have justified it. Mm. I don't know how how long a time frame. And that's the one of the issues with champion data is they don't disclose their algorithm so no one can really tear it apart, which is probably smart. But when it's producing outrageous results like some of the names you mentioned, um, it is a little bit El Stanko and it's hard to take him seriously. Ben McAvoy, elite. Oh, he's a very good player, actually. I, nah, I rate that. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't say elite, elite, but um, oh no, he plays for Port now. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> I like that a lot. But yeah, I don't know. It doesn't make much sense. Um, 
I don't really know why it gets a big looking into. You know, who, who fu- makes it? Who does it? Uh, Champion Data, I think, is their name. Funny thing is, we fall into the trap every single year. We're like, Champion Data's bullshit, and they release their list, and we're like, this is terrible! Like, <laughs> yeah. We still give it the same time of day every single year. <laughs> Legit, yeah, it's a bit silly. We're the worst. Now, in other football news over the off-season, we've heard that the Collingwood Footy Club is in a little bit of hot water for having an external review find that they have systemic racism throughout the club. This is, of course, following uh, explosive accusations from formerly known as Harry O'Brien, now known as Heritia Lumumba, that there was a culture of racism about the footy club at the time that he played there in that sort of like early 20-teens period around the time they won the flag. He was actually a really good, important player for them there. Some big claims made about the footy club at that time, which forced them to conduct an external review, which you have to respect. But it has been found that they have systemic racist culture. Not what you want at all. But they released a, um, a statement from the players and like all the staff and that sort of apologizing for it. Lumumba replied on Twitter. He said he doubts the sincerity of the players. He talked about how like some of the young players had to apologize as well. It's not their fault at all. He reckons it's a top-down issue. So uh, obviously Big Eddie's been under a lot of scrutiny as well. And also he said it's strange that there's black players and staff at the club who had to apologize. And it was like a it, he just didn't think it was a, a sincere apology. It's it's a bit rough. You do feel for Harry O'Brien, especially with the outcome of this <laughs> result. It's not Harry O'Brien oh, anymore, yeah, fuck. Bro. Yeah, you can't help but feel a little bit for Lumumba here. He's obviously come out um, and put himself out there and made these claims. And to be honest, not a lot of people took him seriously. It doesn't help that he's not a very likable bloke. And that doesn't mean what he's saying wasn't valid. Mm. Um, you can both be not that likable, but also be a victim of, you know, a racist culture, which is really, really horrible. Yeah. Unfortunately, it does sound like he was a victim of really bad culture. And it, it is good that at least um, that Collingwood have recognized this and conducted this review. However, I think Eddie Maguire has been slaughtered for the way he came out and said that it was a proud day for the football club and people tore that apart. In your opinion, mm. Eddie Maguire, should he lose his job over this? He's, if there's a culture that's been brewing for a while at Collingwood, that is systemic really- systemically racist and Eddie Maguire's at the top of that you know you gotta ask some serious questions can't imagine too many like heads or or people in higher positions who would keep their job after being found at the top of a a, like corporation that has a culture of racism yeah exactly so apparently Collingwood did receive the outcome of this report back in December on the 17th and Eddie Maguire had actually stepped down a few days earlier or at least announced he was going to step down in a year a few days earlier I wonder if the timing of that is a little sus maybe he had a bit of a he knew which way it was going and he stood down. Um, either way, I can't imagine any other person getting away with this. Tell you what, it's a shit time to be a Collingwood fan, to be fair. Like, after the trade period they had, the end of their season, they yeah. got spanked by Geelong and now they're just bloody racist. Yeah. <laughs> You'd hate to be a Collingwood fan at the moment. Coming from a Freo fan, it's pretty... I don't know. You don't have... You guys have premierships and we don't, but at least we're not bloody racist. All right, here's another one. This was a big piece of news in the past few years. Willie Rioli, you're a West Coast fan. Where is he? What's he been up to? This is a great question because this, he's one of the forgotten men. If you live outside of WA, people are like, yeah, what happened to Willie Rioli? Yes, nothing has happened since he was found to have tested positive for cannabis. And then not only that, but he had actually substituted his um, urine. his urine with what well, I think they found it was Gatorade or something. That's so stupid. Eh? Uh, yeah, well, that's the thing. Everyone was like waiting on tender hooks for us to find what happened. Mm. And not only did they only hear him, I think in January. So, well, yeah, January of 2021. Yeah. So we're, we're talking like 16 months after the fact. What the hell has Asada been doing over this time? Like, yeah. can you imagine if you weren't sure whether you had a future in the AFL or not, and then to be isolated away from the team, but like, yeah, I think he flew back to where he's from. Mm. The mental health like implications of all of this is uh is is really El Dojo and I mm. feel really bad for Willie. Like it's one thing to like have your career potentially ruined, but it's another thing that sixteen months later we still don't know the outcome. So if you were from another part of Australia and hadn't heard any news about it, that is the update. We don't have an update. It's just shit because he's not a bad person either. Like, no. I don't know. He, he probably did have like a spliff or something and just like didn't want to get in trouble. But yeah, having the outcome not been closed, it's just going to be playing on his mind every day. Um, and yeah, he's a, he's a talented player. He should be playing every week. Mm. Sort it out. Oh, he'd be one of our most important players. I'd go as far to say I think he's that talented. Um, he's a one player we haven't replaced since the 2018 Grand Final. And I just want to see him get it back out there because like you said, he's a good bloke as well. Yeah. I think basically what happened for those who don't remember was um, he had basically um, tested positive for weed after the fact. So he's obviously trying to hide the fact that he was uh, he had cannabis in his system mm. and he s- then substituted his urine, but they weren't even testing for those kind of drugs. They were testing for performance enhancers. So really, he's he really he, fucked himself. He, he did cook it a bit. 
But why, why is cannabis illegal in the first place? All right, that's another, that's another <laughs> video. Well, that just about wraps up all the footy news at the moment. Uh, obviously, it's been a little bit dry over the summer. Uh, the Scorchers are playing in the Big Bash final right now. And uh, yeah, I think they're getting slaughtered. So we'll tune into that shortly. <laughs> we definitely won't. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you do check out that offer from manscaped.com who have been great sponsors of the channel all throughout the summer, even where we're not doing that well on YouTube. Uh, really appreciate their support and yours as well. And make sure you stay locked to True Footy. It's going to be a big big year for the channel hopefully and sub to jersey i guess thanks if you want all right thanks for watching see you in the next video see you later